Hi, my name is Sebastian Matteau and in this video I would like to show you how to work with generator expressions in Python. Now this is the fourth and final video in a series about comprehensions in Python. We've previously looked at list comprehensions, dict comprehensions and set comprehensions. And generator expressions, even though they are not called comprehensions but expressions for some reason, um, they are in a sense the most abstract form of a comprehension in Python that you can build any kind of other comprehension from and more. So it is a little bit abstract. Um, you, in order to understand what the generator expression is, you need to understand, first of all, what a generator is. Now, a generator, a regular generator in Python, is a function that doesn't have a return statement in it, but has a yield statement in it. And I've actually have a video on gener or two videos on generator functions, so watch those if you're not familiar with uh, generators. So the idea of a generator function is that it does something, then it has a yield statement that temporarily suspends the function, uh, returns some kind of value to the external world, but whereas a normal return uh, statement would end the function, a yield statement only suspends it. And then later on that function can resume, do something else, yield a new value, suspend again, new to yield, val yield a new value, etc, etc, etc. So it can continue running, communicating with the outside world, etc, etc. Now, because a, a generator function can uh, yield multiple return values, it is essentially like a list, right? There is essentially multiple things in a generator function because it can return multiple things. So a generator function is in Python a so-called iterable object. It is something that has a collection of multiple things by virtue of the fact that it can have multiple return values. Now, a generator expression is similar to a, a generator function but it has a different kind of syntax that is sort of intermediate between a list comprehension that we looked at before and a generator function. Now, this sounds very abstract, I understand that. So let's try to make it a little bit more concrete by showing you some examples. Um, so what are we going to do? Uh, what we're going to create a, a generator of that, that yields numbers that are both prime and part of the Fibonacci series, just like in the previous video we did for a set comprehension. But very different from the previous video. This time we're not going to create a fixed set with a fixed number of elements, but rather we're going to create an infinite generator of numbers that have that property. So we're going to have an infinite list, you could say, an infinite iterable object of all elements that are both prime and um, both prime and part of the Fibonacci series. That sounds very abstract, I say it again, but it will become clear if I show you an example. So first we need some basic ingredients. Here, that's what I have here. I import the iter tools uh, module because we're going to use that. We have a function is prime that takes a number and checks whether it is prime, returns true if it is, returns false if it's not. Secretly, it uses a generator expression inside. So if you want, you can pause the video and try to understand how it works. We have an Fibonacci, uh, is Fibonacci function that similarly takes a number and returns true if it's part of the Fibonacci series, false if it is not. And then we have a print first uh, function that takes any kind of iterable object, such as a generator expression, and prints the first n, by default the first five elements from it. Why did I define that function? Well, because you cannot print out infinite things. If you try to print out an infinite list of numbers, Python will just keep working indefinitely, and that's what I don't want. So here we're going to have an infinite generator of numbers, um, and we're just to make sure that Python doesn't crash, we're going to print out the first five rather than print them out all. Now, okay. So let's start with a simple generator function that if you are familiar with generator functions, you will understand how this works. A generator function superficially looks like a normal function. So I'll define a function and I'll call it primo fibo. And what will it do? Well, it essentially, loo it is, it's going to give you an infinite list of numbers that are both prime and Fibonacci. So first things first, we need to loop through an infinite range of numbers. How do we get an infinite range? Well, we can say for i in itertools.count. What is count? Count is itself a generator that simply counts indefinitely upwards. So we start at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. So it's like an infinite range. Then we check, okay, if, if it is prime, and it is Fibonacci, then we yield our i. 
What does that mean? Well, it means we check if the i is both prime and Fibonacci, as would be the case for some, some numbers. Forget, forgot which ones, actually. Three, for example, I think. Um, and then we're going to yield it. So yield is very different from a return statement because a return statement would end the primo fibo uh, function altogether. Whereas the yield statement would simply yield that particular number, suspend the function, and then the next time it picks up where it left off, where it has left off, and we will continue with the next number that is both prime and Fibonacci. Still very abstract, so how do you use that? Well, we can simply say, for example, um, print first, primo Fibo, up, there we go, and it will print out the first five numbers that are both prime and Fibonacci, 1, 2, 3, 5, 30. This range is in principle infinite. I can also say n is 10, and it will print out the first 10. So how, do, how will this work? How does this work? Well, I call the generator function, and that generator function will sort of create an iterable object that we can loop through. That will be passed to print first as g. Then we're going to loop through it, but I sim simultaneously zip it with a range from 0 to n to make sure that it has an end, because g is actually infinite, and so we zip it together with a, an iterable that is not infinite, a range, we loop through it, and we print out element i from g. So these are a lot of, here we have a lot of concepts that are more or less advanced Python, right? We need to be able to understand what the generator is, what the zip function is, etc., etc. Et but it is not rocket science. I think we can follow this. This is a traditional generator function. Now, how can we do the same thing? Ah, you see, it's actually still working because, uh, let me cancel it, because actually, it becomes very challenging very quickly for high numbers. So let's run it again with only five. Now, how can we do the same thing? How can we accomplish the same thing with a generator expression? A generator expression is between uh, parentheses or in some cases between nothing. But in this case, we're going to put it between parentheses. And then it looks very similar to a list expression or a, set com or a list comprehension or a set comprehension. It has a loopy part in it. The loopy part is the same as within our generator function for i in itertools, oh, itertools.count. And we simply return that i. Uh, then we need to have some kind of filtering criterion if is prime, right? So the exact same syntax as for list comprehension, list comprehension and is Fibonacci. And we assign that to primo Fibo. Now, this works. If we would do this in a list comprehension, Python would immediately start evaluating all the i's from itertools.count. So it would start to work on something that is infinite. If we indicate that it is a generator expression with these uh, parentheses, Python will not immediately start evaluating this entire expression. Rather, what it will do is something that is called lazy evaluation it will generate a new i whenever we ask for it. So if I say print first primo fibo, up, it will print this out. The way it will work is that it will, it will create a generator uh, object. Note that the difference is with the generator function here that we need to explicitly create a generator object by calling the function, right? So there's some syntactic difference that makes it a little bit tricky. We don't need to do that for a generator expression. We simply pass the generator expression to print first. Print first will get it. It will get the first element, and then the generator expression will get to work. It will start to go i0, is that prime and Fibonacci? No. i1, yeah, okay. It will return i, and that will be printed out here. Then print first will continue, right? And the generator expression will keep pick up where it left off, and it will start to check for i is 2, and then i is 3, i is 4, 5, 6, etc., etc. So every time that we get a new element from the generator expression, that's when the gener exp generator expression starts to work, uh, so-called lazy evaluation. That's very different from a list comprehension, which would start to do all the work as soon as we define the list comprehension, because as soon as we define the list comprehension, that's when the list is being generated. So that is very different from a generate between a generator expression and a list comprehension. The fact that the generator expression evaluates as we go along, lazy evaluation, whereas a list comprehension evaluates everything at once. Okay, I realize that this is a bit tricky, right? But it's, it's, it can be very useful. 
Now, a generator expression is in a sense the base of all the other, uh, other comprehensions that we have. And to illustrate that, let's say that we create a Primo Fibo. I will just copy this one. Um, Primo Fibo. Up. But rather than having it go through the infinite range of, uh, of numbers with itertools.count, I will have it go till to, from 0 to, uh, to 100. So Primo Fibo will now print out, will now generate all the numbers from 0 until and including 99 that are both prime and Fibonacci. Now, we can, this is a generator expression. But essentially, if we have, if we say list Primo Fibo, Python will take this generator expression, evaluate it, and turn it into a list, up, like this. And it is a list comprehension. There is no semantic difference between this, what I've typed here, and up, typing it as a list comprehension right away. Up, they're the same thing. So you see that a, a list comprehension is essentially a special case, you could say, of a generator expression. The same thing is true for a, uh, if I would say set Primo Fibo, we would get the set of those same numbers. So the set would take this generator expression, evaluate it from start to finish, and turn the result into a set. Because it will, as soon as I call it, I turn it into a set or a list, the entire contents of the generator expression will be evaluated. And for that, range, for that reason, I had to use a fixed range here, a finite range, 200. Because if I would do the same thing with itertools.count, I can show, actually demonstrate that to you if you want. Up, let's do this. This, will, this is syntactically valid Python, and it will not necessarily give an error message, but it will go into an infinite evaluation. Up, if I execute this, Python will start to create a set of an infinite range of numbers, and that's of course not possible, right? Because a set is finite by, well, in Python, in mathematics not necessarily, but within Python a set is a finite collection of objects. Uh, and we're trying to build that out of an infinite uh, generator expression, and that will just freeze the computer indefinitely. So I will have to uh, cancel it and uh, make it stop. Whereas if I use a range 100, up, you see that it works and it will, the set operation will just evaluate the generator expression uh, from start to finish and turn the result into a set. Okay, so what have we seen here? We've seen that the generator expression is very similar to a list comprehension or a set comprehension or even a dict comprehension, although a dict has this key value mapping, right? Um, but it has the very important difference that it can be infinite. Uh, and why can it be infinite? Well, because the generator expression evaluates elements as you go along, one element at a time. Whereas all the other uh, comprehensions, list, set, and dict comprehensions, are evaluated completely when they are defined. And because of this reason, a generator expression is more flexible uh, than all the other comprehensions. Um, and you can do everything that you can do with a list, set, or a dict comp comprehension also with a generator expression. But in many cases, a generator expression will just make things a little bit more complicated than is necessary, and you're better off using a list comprehension or something similar. But now at least you know how they work. Now, that was the last uh, video in the four-part uh, series about comprehensions in Python. I hope you learned a little bit uh, uh, from, the, from these videos. Uh, thank you very much for your attention.